Hi, this is Kim Watson. Welcome to a weekly review. We have, uh, in fundamental terms, we got to two key economic uh, results out this week. Uh, it's always a quiet week following the non-farm payrolls week. Second week of the month has very little data releases of significance. Uh, but we do have some speakers and uh, there, there could well be some reasonable volatility. Even over the weekend, we've of course had uh, the Prime Minister of the UK, um, Theresa May speaking, and gave the market enough to uh, sell the pound off quite significantly. So well done, Theresa. Um, now, looking at the markets and looking at the fund, uh, the actual numbers that are coming out to, as I say, two data points. One of them is on Wednesday at 9.30, we've got the UK manufacturing figures. Generally get some reasonable volatility around that number. Uh, that's at 9.30 on Wednesday. And then we've got the core retail sales coming out in the US, a bit of a lesser number in terms of volatility. Sometimes it comes out 1.30 on a Friday afternoon. Many are still out for lunch, I'm sure, or thinking of it, because it tends to uh, have a lesser movement, but it, all the same, uh, in the current circumstances, we could see a bit more volatility from it. Speakers in the main, ev main events, main things these days, and uh, we've got Fed Chair Yellen speaking on Friday at 12 o'clock, which could create some reasonable volatility through the markets where she, when she will be uh, talking at a town hall meeting, and also she'll be asked questions following that. So I'm sure she'll get more questions regarding the Trump administration, etc., and what she expects in the coming months, stroke year. There are two other FOMC speakers, Evans and Harker are speaking at 1.30 on Thursday. They are down, down the pecking order in their, in their views. However, they may, in a quieter market, still create some volatility uh, as they speak. And again, they're both subject to questions. So perhaps we could get some reasonable volatility. I'm sure that we haven't seen a the last of it from the UK. I, th I believe the spokesman has already tried to play down what uh, uh, Theresa May has already said, but I'm sure we'll get some more speakers through the week uh, creating the volatility as well. But uh, of course, we never know what time those ones are going to come out at. But what we can do is look at the technicals as ever and be largely drawn by what they're showing us and i'm starting this week as ever with the euro dollar on a weekly pick from a weekly picture last week we managed to break down put a new low in but it never broke beyond the lows there and recovered reasonably well putting a doji in there on a weekly basis the the emphasis to me is probably still to the upper side it doesn't take me to stop me taking shorts intraday but uh, uh overall i'd rather be towards the long side in these markets at the moment on the well i say on these markets certainly on the european a uh, euro dollar rather uh looking at the dailies probably see why it's been sort of pushing up okay friday sold off somewhat on the reasonable robust data that was coming out from the jobs in terms of wage improvement but in the in the main the euro it is stuck a little bit in this 300 pip box as i've drawn on here could well uh, break i'm looking for it to push up towards that daily 50 at some point maybe today to, well maybe not today <laughs> maybe tomorrow now so we, we're running late today nearly four o'clock um i don't well we may get some resistance on the daily 50 i don't expect it to hold too much or put too much resistance there bearing in mind it's been air kissed recently well last month and it's been pierced a couple of times back in november so i would expect at this point if it does start pushing up there it could break however it may just run into the the, the recent highs of the 30th of december so um, that is something just to watch out for but if you can break those sort of levels i'd be looking for it to run up towards the r1 now we have just run short of the month uh, sorry the weekly pivot which is around about 12 pips below today's lows but uh, if it can hold on to where it is at the moment and push up again tomorrow well as i said we sh should be on for the fit daily 50 and maybe if we can break out of this range uh well then uh, i'd be looking towards that uh, uh monthly r1 sort of area there's not much else to stop us at this point so um let's have a look at the pound now the pound dollar and we keep coming back and it's uh it's, it was looking a bit better last week it ended up with this um uh, spinning top following another little spinning top there and well <laughs> and towards friday it still looked like there was a chance of a sort of a, a push up but at the moment it still was more towards the weak side when you look at the dailies 
it uh, yes, it had its rally at a bullish pivot swing in there, ran into uh, just short of the monthly pivot. I think it was marginally short of the monthly pivot, but uh, anyway, it's it's up there. Uh, but uh, since then, well, we've sold off since the, the the weekend here. Now, where to? Well, we're in this near term support. These are absolute lows for many months, years. So it's whether or not this will actually hold. In the past. Uh, back in October, it, it tended to get some sort of uh, traction from these levels. Maybe it still could. Uh, hopefully we're not going to have to wait until Thursday to find out whether it will do, if this will hold. But uh, um, at the moment, as I say, it's still earning bearish side, but uh, I'd be watching for some possible uh, retracement. Um, although I'm just looking at in today's market, it looked at one stage a little bit stronger, but again, it's sold off. It's uh, given back some late gain, so uh, but that may be reversed yet again. But uh, all in all, erring still towards the downside, but very mindful that we may find some support around this lower range. Dolly Yen has uh, taken up the uh, mental in the sense of trying to strengthen it marginally, but when you look at the weekly uh, picture, it's uh, still pretty lackluster in the real terms. Uh, still holding up in a very tight range. Last week's uh, doji, around about double topping there, um, may suggest some further downside. There were some days last week that it certainly looked weak to me, but uh, it's, it's not held up particularly wonderfully. Uh, again, we saw the rally on Friday. At the moment, it's sold off for most of today and a decent move uh, at that. Now, any any moves back into this zone here may be a third and a final chance of a sell point. Other than that, I'm really looking at the, the maybe the break of this 34 uh, moving average that's running up here or the 500 to uh, be more bearish, although we have got sort of quite early support thereafter. Uh, back towards that 50, but it seems that daily 50 really does seem like a decent target for me. Looking at the Aussie dollar, um, well, it appears after last week that we're trying to get back to that 34. Um, as I said, it got oversold in previous weeks. Never, really, well, I did actually get back up there at, uh, straight within a couple of weeks there, but uh, um, there, there may be a chance for it to push back on, back on towards that. It's, it looks like it's worked off its downside from this wedge pattern that I've drawn on from the weeklies. Looking at it today, again, it's fallen short of getting down to the weekly pivot, but it has um, it's putting in quite a sound day, really, uh, compared to Friday. And if uh, tomorrow breaks the highs here, we see a break of this again. We could be looking for a daily 50 as a target and uh, maybe beyond into the monthly R1 and uh, if possibly beyond that. But uh, there is quite a bit of technical resistance that sits around the R1 with the prior lows, etc. there. Finally, the Canadian dollar. Well, the Canadian dollar has benefited from some benefit of oil, but also uh, the slight, slighter weakness in the dollar index or the dollar itself. From a weekly point of view, though, we could be seeing this as the benefit of the oil, I think, as much as anything. Um, it's uh, held on last week. It held on to this low side and it's pushing down. I've still got the same regression channel I've had on here for some time now, for several weeks. Um, it, it does look like it might start trying to break out the bottom of that channel. Now, you could draw a normal trend line across the bottom, measure it, put the channel on, and you, at some point, if it breaks it, I would expect the depth of that uh, channel to the downside, whether you use this regression channel type style or however you do it, I would expect that that could bring us down to sort of the 128 mark if it does start breaking through over a number of week, weeks, it may be, or quite quickly if it, you get some good oil movement or weaker dollar. Now, when you look at it from a daily perspective, we, again, it came up short of the weekly pivots. I don't really like it when we've got about three or four currencies short of the weekly pivots because it generally means that, well, there's still the potential for them to be hit from a statistical way. However, if this can break Friday's lows, well, could be on right back to the 200, maybe the, the uh, daily 500. There is quite some near-term support there into last month's uh, uh, S2 pivot there, which may come in at the time with the uh, daily 200. So we could get a bit of support from that level in the next day or two. Okay, that's pretty much it for me. So we've had the fundamentals. I will wish you a uh, great week and we'll be back next week. Take care. Bye for now.